agents of change. When there are problems, we as Muslims step forward and try to come up with solutions. Now today, we are at the Minnesota State House. We are meeting the youngest senator in the state of Minnesota. Her name is Zainab Muhammad. And by the way, she happens to be Muslim. As a senator, her job is to help make the world a better place for citizens in Minnesota. And the reason why Kothar, Qasim, and you are coming with me is because my hope and my dream is for every single one of us to become an agent of change to help make the world a better place like Senator Zainab. So, let's meet her. Do you remember your first day? It was such a blur. I woke up at 3 a.m. just like being nervous. You go through this election that's sort of like a little bit intense. And then I won and I felt good about it. But then like it blows up and there's like a whole world of like media. Like you just sort of feel like your life is spinning and out of control in a way. I like grew up as Muslim so I always had this faith of like whatever Allah wills like nothing can change. The night before I got sworn in, I was at my mom's house and she's like, you just need to pray Sakara and like just start your day healthy and like wake up early, you know? And so I got up, I prayed. The Imam met us here and we did our swearing in. All my friends were getting sworn in on like books that they loved, but like I wanted to be sworn in on the Quran. Being Muslim was like such a big part of my life. Like yeah. I, grew, I was born Muslim, grew up in Islam and like throughout the campaign, Throughout, in between that time of being sworn in, it was like the faith that sort of like kept me going in some ways. Assalamu alaikum, my kids. Today I have a question for Senator Zainal Muhammad. My first question is, how do you become a hijabi? How did I become a hijabi? Well, like, I feel like, you know, I was born in a Muslim country. I had never lived in a world at that time where people didn't wear hijab. My grandma, my great grandma, my family, everybody, everyone was wearing a yeah. hijab. I think hijab is a journey, Islam is a journey for each individual who is practicing the faith and how they want to do it. You know, I've got nieces that don't wear hijab and probably will never, and that's like how they practice their faith and they're still able to be Muslim. It's not about the, like the piece of cloth that's in your head that you're wearing. It's like the pride that comes with it. I had met with a group of Muslim people who were national before I, when I was running and they had said to me, we could have 10 Muslim men be elected. It is so important that you're there so because how? like your hijab and the fact that you take pride in, in being this woman who dresses modestly means that like everybody can see you are representative of billions of people, not just your district, and so yeah. I always keep that in mind. That's so incredible. As as Muslims, right, Kothar? If someone wa sees me in the street, they might think I'm Muslim, they might not know, but if they see a, a, a woman wearing a hijab, they'll know that that person is a Muslim. They're the kind of the flag bearers of the faith. Um, there were like a lot of imams who just, I had respected over the years, who've been a part of my life, huh. who are now like, you better do the right thing. And I'm like, what's the right thing? There's so many different people, right? So Kothar, we call them constituent. 80,000. 80,000 people. So there's 80,000 people who cannot be here, but Senator Zainab is a representative. Some people want to go up, some people want to go down. Some people might want $15 for minimum wage, some people might not. There's so many different people. How do you, not just among your constituents, but also like when you think about all oh, the imams and these people, how do you balance all of that? I often say it's easier to figure out where the district is at, because you live there and you sort of know what the community supports. But then they, in the Muslim community, like it's a vast, it's a big community that not everybody, th we're not monolith. Like, right? Yeah, like, everyone's we don't all different. Think the same, everybody thinks differently. But the thing that anchors us all is like God and faith. It's often like, even when we disagree, it's like the one thing that I keep in mind is like God and Allah. Yeah, I'll be asking Zainab Muhammad a question. What made you become successful in your life? I think what made me successful is the belief I have in myself, the belief I have in our community. 2020 happened 
George Floyd was murdered in our, in our community, that sort of was like an outrageous moment for me and for everybody around. No matter what, like I believed in our community so much and they believed in me. My senator retired, everybody was like, you need to run. So there was like a whole campaign that was called hashtag run Zayna Brun to oh, like really? influence me to run, yeah. And I was like, this is so intense. And it was all my neighbors, like people I've known in the community for a long time. If you don't try because you think you might fail, that like you've already failed. And then people in my inner community were like, you're just, you don't have it in you. You're just not gonna do it. And I was like, screw this. In the beginning, it was sort of this idea of like, yeah, I can. Yeah. And I'm gonna show you. Typically like on a regular day when we're in session, walking up here is like hundreds of lobbyists. Wow. <laughs> so, 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 so can you explain to Kothar, what is a lobbyist? Lobbyist is somebody who either works for an organization uh, or, you know, is like pushing for a particular issue or a bill. Senator Zainab, she's one of the people who gets to make the laws. So say, for example, you are a company that really wants to pay your employees $15. Well, you can lobby her and say, Senator Zainab, I really want you to do this. This is why you should do this. But if you're a company who says no, we don't want to do that. Then they'll grab her and say, you know, Senator Zainab, it's a bad idea. Let me tell you what's a bad idea. It's called a lobbyist. Okay, but baby, look at this. Insane. So that thing is a light, it's a chandelier. Oh, wow. And now it's on when you go outside every single night. At night, when I'm in my office, the, there's like, the capital is like a light. The other thing you'll notice, go through about these murals, can I tell you one thing? They're all white people. Yeah. Right? You'll never see a hijabi here, I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's, it's kind of cool and that represents it, right? Because Senator Zainab, she was not born here. Mm -mm. You were born in Somalia. Mm -hmm. What was it like to become a Muslim senator? And also what inspired you to become one? What made me run for uh, the seat or like made me want to run as a Muslim is the idea that there wasn't a single person who looked like me who was representing our community. We went through a Trump administration which was really horrifying for our community with the Muslim ban and what I learned from that is like uplifting being a Muslim is the only way that people will hear us. Maybe we can get through it this way. Okay. I don't know if we can. But we can try. I'm hoping it lets us in the chamber. When it's like prayer time and we're in session, I'll go into like Senator Champion's office because he oh. has an office in here and he knows. So I'll just like pray in there. This is so cool. Beautiful. You know what it makes me think of, Kothar? So what Senator Zainab was saying was that like, so she's one of the politicians, right? She's one of the people. So everyone wants to talk to her, everyone wants to meet her. Why? Because they think, well, maybe Senator Zainab can help her. And it's tough because she's one human being. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of people who probably want to meet with her, but it's tough. And even if they meet with her, doesn't necessarily mean that like she can do something about it. Mm -hmm. And it makes me think about God. Mm -hmm. Because go through Noor, like think about it, right? Like, you know, every time we pray, it's like we have a meeting with Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is never busy for us. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, in the same way that there's such like a beautiful door that's like protected and like we can't go in, even if we want to go in, like we want to go, we can't go in, it's locked. But with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the door is always open, right? And so we can always access our creator and that's, that's really special. I think about that with like important people because, you know, it's, it's um, the most important is God. God. How does being Muslim impact the work that you do? In my faith, the one thing that is clear is like you have to have integrity in the process. No matter what I'm doing, I'm always considering like, am I being, am I having integrity in that process? Am I being purposeful? Am I being kind and empathetic towards an issue or a group of people I don't necessarily agree with? And navigating it while also uplifting that like being Muslim is like a good thing and mm. it is normal and it is okay. What is this? That was, we were on the floor just like talking. This was the day that we signed driver's licenses into law, which was the first bill I did. So I passed it at 2 a.m. on a, like the biggest snowfall that we had that year. Oh my goodness. And the entire community was here. It was like 3,000 people that filled the floors of the wow. Capitol. Wow. Had been waiting for hours. And they had been told, 
we should push the bill because it's so snowy and we don't want you guys to be in. and they were like no we've been waiting for this for 10 years so i was like i'm committed to getting it done with them yeah when we didn't everybody comes down there's all these flowers being handed to them and all these members are like who are all these immigrants like they're just confused yeah and so that same member comes up to me two days later and he goes, I just want to tell you, like, you did a fantastic job defending your bill on the floor. Wow. And I was like, I'm so happy I could teach you a thing or two. Yeah. <laughs> As I think about some of the things that you've really championed, right? Mm -hmm. So you've championed, hey, we want a $15 minimum wage, universal health care, which is health care for everyone, mm -hmm. safety and security. Now, mm -hmm. w when I think about that, what I hear is, this is someone who cares about people who are less fortunate, mm -hmm. right? Who benefits from $15? People who are going through difficulty. Who benefits from universal health care? Well, people who don't have health care. My holy prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings, he was an orphan, Yeah. right? It's my job to take care of the people who have the least. How do you send food to people? to people in ones that far away? I think it's important to talk about that, like, Palestinian people deserve a self determination and it is okay to uplift a group of people who are struggling currently dying their voices and that is something that everybody should be able to do without them being afraid of what might or may not happen send aid where we can and also when they don't have a voice at the table be that voice for them so if someone asks you okay are you American are you Muslim are you both how do you respond I'm Muslim American. And you're part of the Nuri Kids family. <laughs> what does the future look like for you? I think the future is bright. I think the future is hopeful. Three more years, two more sessions after this, and I'm hopeful that I will get more things done this session, and inshallah we win the majority again next term. And if that happens, I have a lot more things I want to get done before the four years is up. I want to get minimum wage up. I want to do one iftar for the community. Maybe this year, inshallah, I don't know. I want more sisters in, in these seats. I want another sister to run. It would make my world and I'm just hopeful. Senator Zain Muhammad, thank you so much. We wish you all the best, inshallah. And may Allah make it easy for you, put barakah on your efforts. Mm -hmm. Continue to put sincerity in all of your intentions, allow you to be a vessel through which God works.